What the fuck is up? It's Gucci Man and G. The city on the titty with a ditty and a titty. What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ, to the headquarters. Welcome back to the channel. I am Nicholas. I am still unable to load video on the OBS screen capture software. SOS, somebody fucking help me figure that shit out. But it's Saturday. Thus, we need to hit you with that monkey knife fight action. I will preface this by saying I'm filming this on Wednesday, which is earlier than I typically film, but I will be in Charlotte for the weekend from Thursday to Saturday, so I won't be able to film anything during those hours. That's okay, because we got the fucking lock of the century, lockdown, monkey knife fight. If y'all took my advice last week, then we want some cash. I realized that I actually lost because we did a touchdown dance with Christian McCaffrey, Ezekiel Elliott, and Dalvin Cook. Prior to the games, I was feeling fan fucking tastic. The matchups were there. Zeke versus Detroit. Yada, yada, yada. C-Mac versus Atlanta. I'm like, oh my god, we might score 17 touchdowns between the three of them. We head into the third quarter. We're touchdownless. I'm like, holy shit, I just lost a lot of people a lot of money, eh? Huh? Because in my touchdown dance that I recorded last week, I told y'all to do over two and a half. I always tell y'all to go with safety first. I've literally never fucking said that on my channel, actually, now that I think about it, but you can't really blame me if you went with a higher touchdown total. I went with over three and a half. I told y'all, I advised y'all to go with over two and a half. Thus, you ended up hitting. Zeke scored two touchdowns, thank God. And uh, I believe Dalvin Cook got in for the other one. So Chris McCaffrey somehow did not get in the end zone. 190 total yards from scrimmage. It's a fucking travesty. Lost a lot of money doing that. Anyways, we got another lock. We got another lock, but we're going to stay away from the star shootouts, the touchdown dances, yada, yada, yada. I think what happens is when you play in one single game, it's easier to hit on the over-unders because you can kind of weave a, a game. Each game has its own story, its own thread, right? So for instance, a couple weeks ago, we had a monkey knife fight in which we did the reception collection. So you have to pick three wide receivers or three players throughout the game in which you think will hit a certain number of receptions for that game. We picked Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Tyler Lockett. So rather than picking three stud receivers scattered throughout three random games, this made a lot of sense. It, it was an easy hit on the over. No matter what happened, we were going, obviously both defenses are not good against the pass, but the bigger picture here is like, you have fallback plans because, hey, say Mike Evans has a bad game, that almost definitely means Chris Godwin has a good game and vice versa. And if James Winston, like he usually does, throws up 400 passing yards and scores 30 points for his team, on the flip side, that just means more passing action for Russell Wilson. So I almost think that it's better to stay away from individual players and individual games because there's usually storylines to be woven here that kind of makes sense. So that's the way I think you should look at these monkey knife fight challenges as well as when you're playing like DFS and things like that and making GPP lineups of, of sorts. Anyways, for those of all that are new, monkey knife fight is all about player props, fantasy points, receptions, touchdowns, whatever you want to slice and dice it. They got all different sports, basketball, football, baseball, zim -a -zim -a ball. I don't fucking know what I'm talking about anymore. Let's focus back in. Let's focus back in. So we head over to monkeyknifefight.com. If you make your first deposit and you use the promo code BDGE, you will get a 100% deposit match bonus on whatever you throw down in there. 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 million bucks. Don't put down 100 million bucks. But you'll get 100% deposit match bonus if you use the promo code BDGE on monkeyknifefight.com. We head over here. We head to the Detroit versus Washington game. Now, you might think of this game and say, oh my God, backup quarterbacks. This is fucking disgusting. I want no part of this. They even got Jeff Driscoll still in his Bengals uniform. That's how much nobody gives that his ass respect. Jeff Driscoll has been a beast for fantasy. His rushing upside is fantastic, which is why we are going to nail this fantasy challenge. Not that one, actually. This one. The over-under. We're going the over on fucking everybody. This is full PPR. Galladay, bounce back game versus Redskins. Horrible pass defense. On the flip side, Detroit. Horrible pass defense. I'm not scared about Terry going against Darius Slay. He has roasted plenty of top cornerbacks that he's gone up against this year. I'm he's I'm not going to say he's matchup proof because he's got Dwayne Haskins and whatnot, but saying that there is a top cornerback covering him does not make me shy away from Terry. He was... Um, he actually ended up with like three for 65 last game and he had a 60 yard bomb called back for some bullshit holding call. So he was, you know, one inch away from having a monster game last week. I also think Dwayne Haskins is actually going to come out and play well this week. I don't know why. I got a gut feeling in, in my heart of parts 
inside my intestines, something is like, Nick, it's fucking Dwayne Haskins season, baby. So I listen to what's what what goes on inside my stomach, inside my heart, and it's telling me that Dwayne Haskins, Dwayne Haskins heartbreak season is upon us. So Haskins, Terry, what you have to do is you have to pick three of the four correct. So we have Driscoll, Haskins, Galladay, Terry. I think this is going to turn into like a disgusting, homeless version of a shootout. And I think there's going to be a lot of passing. I think both teams are pretty terrible on the ground. They have bad offensive lines. So I think Driscoll's a smash over because he has that rushing upside. Dwayne Haskins is obviously going to get uh, a little testy towards the end of the game. We'll see whether or not he gets that over. But I'm confident in both of these wide receivers hitting the over on these points just due to the matchup and because it is full PPR. So we're going to go with over. We have leverage in case one of them goes under because you only have to hit three out of four correct and you will two and a half X your buy-in. So we're going to throw the rest of the money. Actually, you know what? We'll save a little bit for next week. So we're going to throw 10 down. We're going to win 25 in addition to getting our 10 back. We're hitting the over on all four of these players. Let's fucking eat. Skirt. So that is my favorite monkey knife fight play of the week, as if I looked at any of the other fucking games besides this one. But I like that one. That happened to be the first one I looked at. We're going to pay the fucking mortgage via this, via Jeff Driscoll. It's officially Jeff Driscoll mortgage season, baby. Um, but drop a comment down below. Let me know what uh, what props you guys like on monkey knife fight this week. Because again, if you're new, you know, you could play any sport. You could play any individual game within the sport. And uh, they have a lot of like interesting different props that you can mess around with so it's a fun website if you want to double the deposit that you put down use promo code bdge when you do so and that will get you that deposit match let's head over to the dfs portion of today's video which will be solely with joe holka because again i am traveling we usually film on friday but i told his ass to send me over something nice and i'll uh, flip it on the back of this video so thank you all for joining me personally today i hope you all enjoyed joe's video make sure you're following him on his social media which will be linked down below uh hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel if you are new that's it love y'all if you're wondering what i'm looking at when nick and i are doing our shows it's typically going to be my data sheet and i do make this available to all my twitch subscribers as well i know we talked about my streams on sunday morning but this is something that i put out in the beginning of the week when I go through my first looks, but also something that I'm using and updating throughout the week to build my lineups on DraftKings and FanDuel. So if you want access to that, make sure you jump in my Discord. Really trying to focus on the things that I know really matter at the position, things like yards per attempt, average intended air yards, but also the matchup. Uh, the one thing that I'm paying attention to from a matchup perspective is teams that can be beat in the short area of the field versus the deep area of the field. Vegas lines, looking at things like pace, game environment, but also pressure, teams that are pressuring um, over the short term as well. So a team like Atlanta, who's been sh pressuring a ton recently, will pop up on this sheet. So for example, Jameis Winston, 6,200. Tampa Bay is a team that has the 24th best offensive line this year. But Atlanta on the other side, so these, these right here are going to be the opponent pressure rates. And basically... The other side of the ball, 32.4% for Atlanta on the season, but over the last four games, 41.5% pressure rate. So we know that they're bringing a lot more blitzes. And then this metric right here that says QB, it's typically gets the QB skill. So how a quarterback does while under pressure and while not under pressure. So Mason Rudolph, Ryan Tannehill, Tom Brady doesn't see a ton of pressure. So you can kind of ignore that one a little bit. Mitch Trubisky, Kyle Allen, these are, these are the quarterbacks that aren't doing well under pressure over this season so that's kind of how i was a little bit underweight last week on kyle allen one of those guys that doesn't handle pressure very well at all and on the other side of it you'll see quarterbacks that do provide really nice value even when they're under pressure guys like russell wilson carson wentz i don't know if i completely buy this dwayne haskins one but i'll have to go back and and check that matt ryan those type of things so i think that looking at that it's something that we should be kind of using in our thought process when we're trying to choose the quarterbacks but also i think that it's even more important in DFS to try and get a rushing floor. So that's kind of what got us on Josh Allen last week. Guys like Jeff Driscoll, both those guys still in play. No Lamar Jackson this week, no Patrick Mahomes. So I do think that going the route of paying down for Jeff Driscoll does make some sense this week. He's 5,500. They obviously priced him up quite a bit. Washington is a team that can be beaten in the short area of the field. And that's kind of what Jeff Driscoll has been doing anyway. He hasn't been pushing the ball downfield much at all. So I think that the weapons that he does have available, they're probably a little bit overpriced, but in larger field tournaments, I still think it's fine to go to Detroit in this spot. Don't love the Washington side of the ball in that game. So if we did want to kind of pivot, I, I would expect the really popular game to be uh, this Atlanta and Tampa Bay game, right? So Matt Ryan, 
Jameis Winston. These guys are going to be extremely popular. I, I think they're pretty easily stackable. This whole game is pretty easily stackable. So Matt Ryan isn't someone that I play a ton just because he doesn't give us that rushing floor, but he has been extremely consistent this year. They're a home favorite against this Tampa Bay massive funnel defense. So I do think Matt Ryan, especially if you're going to pair him with Julio, Calvin Ridley, you can probably bring it back with one piece on the Tampa Bay side as well. Squarely in play this week, especially in larger field tournaments. I play a lot of higher stakes, smaller field stuff. So guys, uh, that the difference between trying to beat 100,000 people in something like the Millionaire Maker or for me, 100 or less, 50 or less people, I like to build in the floor of the rushing upside. So I do think that Russell Wilson is pretty interesting this week if you're paying up. Against Philly, this is a team that we can target, but they have been a little bit better since they've gotten a little bit healthier in their secondary. But Russell Wilson, a guy that's not scared to push the ball down the field, he's one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the red zone. We know that. The price tag, 6800 being the most expensive this week, I still think it's, it's relatively uh, in play to get there this week. Um, so I think that he's the top-end guy that I would be prioritizing in addition to Winston and Ryan in that high total game. But if we wanted to pay all the way down, I do think there's a couple options that we should at least be considering in larger field tournaments or if you just really wanted to go with a, a stars and scrubs approach. So Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's 5K. Mitch Trubisky is 5,100. And this is kind of the difference between season long and in DFS because we would be considering these guys in a slate like this week where, tight, or where pricing is extremely tight, right? So I think that that's the only reason you'd be considering these guys. Ryan Fitzpatrick, some clear weapons that you can stack him with as well if you wanted to go with Devontae Parker, if you wanted to go with Mike Gusecki. So I think that the price at 5K against this matchup where Cleveland does have some injuries as well, not sure they're going to be able to bring as much pressure as usual. They have some secondary issues. I think that that Cleveland and Miami game might be a little bit sneaky as far as shootout potential. So I like Fitz. He throws the ball downfield, gives us a little bit on the ground. Mr. Trubisky is someone I don't think I've played all season, um, but the Giants matchup is really strong. Um, well, well below average in all the categories that I am kind of looking at. Mitch Trubisky hasn't been using his legs much, but we've seen him do that in the past. It's really a price thing with 5,100, and there's a couple options I think make sense. Taylor Gabriel is really cheap on DraftKings as well. So if you're in kind of a pinch and you want to kind of leverage the field a little bit with a really cheap, low-owned guy that you can stack and kind of, uh, I guess, jam in some studs like Julio, Michael Thomas, Christian McCaffrey, it's a lot easier to do if you pay all the way down at quarterback. I still prefer Jeff Driscoll. Um, it's... It's pretty. Uh, it's one of those slates where if you did want to get up to Russell Wilson or even Josh Allen in a tougher matchup, I think that that's um, kind of where my preference would be if you are going to avoid this Matt Ryan and James Jameis Winston situation. So I will say that I am kind of on the side where I think that this Atlanta defense is for real, just because since they came out of the bye and they got that that change at offensive or at defensive coordinator, they've just been bringing so much more pressure, and that's something that I really uh, try and avoid when picking quarterbacks. So Winston, I think, is is definitely going to draw a ton of ownership this week because of the matchup. But I, I guess I have a little bit of pause based on what Atlanta has been able to do over the last two weeks. At the running back position, if you guys have watched any of my shows with Nick this year, I do think that just trying to pile up as much volume and just paying up for these guys is what makes the most sense in pretty much every week. So Christian McCaffrey is someone that I've played, I think, in every single slate he's been in, at least on the main slate. So 10-5 um, is something that does, uh, I guess, you have to have a little bit of flexibility with the rest of your roster to make it work. But I do think that there's really no one that can kind of compete with his workload, um, his usage through the air against New Orleans. This is a tough spot, right? So ninth best team against the run, eighth best against running backs in the passing game. So it's not a great matchup by any means. A team total is relatively low. So if you did want to pay down from Christian McCaffrey this week, the guy that I'm on is Alvin Kamara. So 8,200, he's someone that I don't have projected for as many touches as some of these guys up here. But the passing game involvement has just been crazy. 10 targets in two, each of the last two games. He's 8,200, so you got to pay up for a little bit. But Carolina just gives it up so much on the ground as well that I think this could be a pretty big blow-up spot for Alvin Kamara. And I, I think that that's a team total that I really want to have a piece of on the New Orleans side of the ball. So interested in Kamara, I think he's probably going to be one of the, the best plays on the entire slate uh, at any position. So prioritizing him for sure. I still think Le'Veon Bell is a little bit underpriced relative to his volume. 6,400 is, is the guy that I'd probably take some shots on in, in tournaments. Um, Derrick Henry is a guy that a lot of people want to talk about this week. So I do think that there's some narratives surrounding how he just smashes Jacksonville. And I could see going to him in this matchup, like 30th against the run. It's getting a little bit colder, all that. 6,900 is a pretty good price for a guy that's going to see about 23 touches. I guess get nervous, these guys that don't catch passes at all. Guys like Derrick Henry, guys like Nick Chubb. 
I will say Nick Chubb's 8,100, not going anywhere near that. But Derrick Henry, for that price, I would definitely have some tournament exposure if you're rolling out like 20 teams or something like that. I think he's a guy that still could break the slate, even though he's not going to have that pass catching involvement of these other guys. Um, the other guys I'm kind of looking at, I think Saquon Barkley at 7,900 in tournaments still makes some sense. I hate this team total, but it is Chicago and you can run on Chicago this year. So I think that if Saquon pops off for a game at some point, I do want to be early on that while his price is depressed at 7,900. So uh, the last thing I want to talk about at running back is paying down for some guys that um, kind of burned us last week, right? So if we get Miles Sanders, if Howard's out again, he's 5K. We can project him for about 20 touches or so. I think he's going to be a little bit more involved in the passing game. This week as well, Seattle, this is a game that this Philly Seattle game, I think could be a little bit sneaky as well as far as points being scored. It's a really nice price tag on Sanders. I think going back to him, no issues with that whatsoever. Brian Hill, I don't think anyone's going to play this guy against Tampa Bay because they've been so strong against the run, but you can still project him for a decent amount of touches as well. Don't love that one as much. Um, I don't really love a lot of the value at running back in most weeks. Uh, I typically try and stay up toward these guys. Um, I can project their workload a little bit. Um, better. I will say that there's some really tough matchups up here for some of those guys. So definitely something to think about. So this is the piece of my data sheet that I think a lot of people really enjoy and it's the wide receiver portion. And I think that weighted opportunity rating is something that I weigh pretty heavily in my thought process. It's basically a metric that's target market share of air yards, air yard market share. It's really just uh, going to give us these guys that are seeing the deeper targets, the more valuable targets. It's free at airyards.com, but I kind of bring it all together with stuff like yards per route run projector reception. So I do think that Julio Jones is going to be a massive priority for me on this slate uh, against Tampa Bay, that funnel defense that we talked about. Julio Jones, Kamara, like those guys, I'm trying to figure out ways to to play them along with Christian McCaffrey per usual. So I do think that if you wanted to go down a little bit, OBJ at 7K on DraftKings is someone that would make a ton of sense in the Baker stacks. I think you could play Jarvis Landry with them as well. And I, I mentioned weighted opportunity rating. Odell Beckham, third highest weighted opportunity. And then Jarvis Landry is still right there in the top 10. So I really like him quite a bit. Uh, I think that both of those guys are are squarely in play. Um, I think for some of these other guys that we're talking about, Mike Evans. So in this Tampa Bay game, one of the things that I was uh, kind of alluding to before is how much Atlanta has been pressuring. That is something that I kind of worry a little about a little bit about with Mike Evans, because if they get to Jameis significantly um, throughout this game, it might be less opportunities for Mike Evans to get downfield. And, you know, he's the one that's seeing those deeper targets. So yards per route run, something that I definitely look at as well, taking out some of these smaller samples like Marvin Hall. Some of the most consistent wide receivers in the NFL are going to hit this metric. So Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, Mike Evans, Amari Cooper, like John Brown, these guys are all in there. So that's something that I'm paying attention to. Um, I do think that Michael Thomas at 9,300 still in a pretty great spot this week. I actually really like the New Orleans side of the ball. Uh, against Carolina. So I think that that's a spot where Michael Thomas has just given us really nice um, just consistency this year, almost that of a running back. And that's not something that I say um, lightly. So I think that both those guys are interesting. It's a tough week at wide receiver. So I think if you wanted to pay all the way down for someone like Taylor, Taylor Gabriel, I mentioned him, he's all the way down at 4,200, I believe. Yeah, 4,200 for Taylor Gabriel against Giants. I think it's a great spot for him, um, especially if Trubisky ends up playing. He's kind of not scared to throw the ball to Gabriel. So I think that that's an interesting one. Um, a couple injuries to monitor, Auden Tate. I, I think that against Pittsburgh, he's still someone that could be a, a potential buy low this week. If we wanted to go up a little bit, I still think that DJ Moore is super interesting at 6,400. He's still someone that's going to be top six in weighted opportunity. So like that quite a bit. I just think that the volume is going to be there for him. He's got at least nine targets in five straight games. He's actually averaging 11 across that. So we're still kind of Keeping an eye on Marshawn Lattimore and that hit that hamstring. Hopefully we have more information on him as the week goes on. If you wanted to go to someone uh, to pair with Russell Wilson, this is someone that I don't play a ton of because his price kind of gets away with us, uh, gets away from us at times. But Tyler Lockett might be a decent pivot off of Julio in that same price range. I think he's someone that's really going to have to kind of make his bread off of efficiency. But having Russell Wilson out there, I do think that this leg injury uh, for Lockett is something that's kind of a non-issue out of the buy. I think that um, the Eagles secondary is playing better, like I said, but I still think it's a plus matchup for Tyler Lockett. Um, outside, if you didn't have the salary gap to Julio, I think you still consider going to someone like Calvin Ridley in this spot. So Calvin Ridley is someone that I think uh, after he had that big week uh, last week, I think maybe people might jump off of that, but he definitely benefits from kind of Hooper still being gone um, and just in general, Brian Hill, right? So Julio Jones, I'm his foot 
was kind of an issue earlier in the week. It looks like uh, that's kind of behind us at this point. But again, massive funnel funnel defense from Tampa Bay. So I think going there um, all the way down to Russell Gage, I think we look at that play a little differently. Um, if he scores last week, he's super cheap, just like these really cheap wide receivers this week, I think might be tougher um, than it has been in the past. I think Randall Cobb at 4,800 is someone that we could consider. He's really kind of come alive recently. He's had at least seven targets in three straight games, 5.8 on the season. So I think that it's really one of those spots where if, if, if Amari Cooper last week was um, as limited as they're kind of talking about, I still think that there's a chance that Stefan Gilmore could shadow Cooper in this week if he is feeling a little bit better. So that doesn't honestly like Cobb still could be one of those guys that's going to be uh, extremely involved. He could see six targets or so. And at 4,800, I think that that's a pretty decent price for him. On the other value side of things, we're trying to keep an eye on Tim Patrick because he's the stone man at 3K. So uh, Denver wide receiver, like obviously uh, it was his first game back uh, last week and actually he ran a ton of routes. So Corlin Sutton ran 45 routes. Patrick ran 38. Deshaun Hamilton, 26. So I still think that the Broncos are really high on Patrick as a player. So he actually had eight targets, 20% target share. So at 3K, we just don't see guys like this um, seeing that type of uh, target share. So if he sees six targets at 3K, you're feeling pretty good about that. Um, and then, yeah, I think that that's pretty much it for me from a value perspective this week. I think the ceiling, you really just want to try and get up to the Julio Jones, Michael Thomas tier if you can, of course. Um, if you can't get all the way up there, I think it's these these Cleveland guys and then paying all the way down for some of the, the kind of mega, uh, I guess, probably thin but really cheap options. I think that's where I'm at. So at the tight end position, one of the things that I'm paying attention to is routes run over the last four games. We obviously want tight ends that are blocking less, running more routes. So someone that really stands out to me this week is Vance McDonald at 3,500. I do think that anytime you're kind of placing your hopes and dreams on a, a, a Rudolph-led offense, it might be a little bit scary, but it's an awesome matchup against Cincinnati, 31st against the tight end this year. So I think at that price point, he's someone that could pay off that very easily. I, I do think that if you wanted to go to Noah Fant, that would still make a ton of sense. I, I think that, that Finley has been throwing to the tight end more than almost anyone in the entire league. 3,900 for Noah Fant. Since Sanders has been gone, he's had a pretty massive target share there. So I think those are the two guys at the cheap end that I would be prioritizing. Maybe Dallas Goddard if we don't have Alshon Jeffrey again in this game, plus matchup for Goddard. They've been running a lot of two tight end sets as well. I think that Ertz might just be a really tough guy to get to this week at 6K. So not so much interested in that from kind of a point per dollar uh, perspective. So I think those are probably the guys tight end seems uh, relatively straightforward this week. There's always going to be some of these kind of more thin options that you could consider someone like Cam Brate after he saw a bunch of targets last week could do a decent amount for you guys. Um, weighted opportunity rating is the third highest behind uh, Ertz and Fant. Saw a massive amount of targets last week. We do think there's going to be some some fireworks in this Tampa Bay Atlanta game. So targeting uh, teams with large totals is something that I I do like to kind of prioritize. I just don't think Jared Cook is running enough routes for me, but he could get there. And I like that total quite a bit against Carolina. It could be kind of one of those guys that that ruins a week. Um, Mike Gusecki is someone that I think will have a couple of big games down the stretch. It's just going to be really hard to kind of quantify when those games are going to come. But 3400 is still a really nice price point for him. He just hasn't done a ton with his volume so far. So I think that in a larger field tournament, maybe if you're playing Fitzpatrick, something like that, um, it's a really cheap option that's just going to pivot off of, I think, Fant and McDonald, who might end up being significantly more popular. So at the defense position, a lot of the really large favorites this week are priced up. So it's a tougher spot to where I personally just like to focus on pressure rate at this point and really try and target some of these spots where I think there could be turnover. So I think that Jacksonville at 2800 really stands out. Ryan Tannehill is someone that will take sacks. He's taken more sacks over the entire uh last season um, outside of Dwayne Haskins um, than anyone. So these guys that take sacks, Haskins, Tannehill, Finley, Daniel Jones. So targeting those guys with defense is something that I always think makes a decent amount of sense. Not so much on Detroit. They don't pressure enough. But again, targeting Haskins is probably not the worst idea. I do think Cincinnati at 2100, like, again, not a play you would probably ever consider in season long, but they're they're pressuring at an above average rate. Mason Rudolph, we know he will make mistakes and throw picks. So um, someone that hasn't done very well under pressure this year, 2,100 does a lot for your roster. We talked about the, the Cardinals last week at 1,500. Like it, you need to save at these positions where there's a lot more variance, in my opinion. And it's definitely going to be turnover and touchdown driven on the way drafting scoring is. So I think that paying down is something I'm almost always trying to do. Um, in this spot, um, I'm always going to try and target pass attempts whenever possible as well. So if you did want to go the route of playing the Tampa Bay defense, kind of middle of the pack in terms of pressure, 
but I do think there's going to be a lot of passing on the Atlanta side of the ball as well. Matt Ryan is someone that was throwing a decent amount of picks earlier in the season, so he might end up kind of going back that route as well. Philly defense, I mentioned they've been pressuring a good amount. They're getting healthier, 2,500 against Russell Wilson. I, I don't love targeting Russell Wilson basically ever. You can see he's really strong under pressure, but he will kind of run into some sacks now and again. So I think 2,500 for that price is something that would make some sense. Cleveland, I was a little bit higher on earlier in the week before I realized how many injuries they had. 3,800, I think that against Miami and Ryan Fitzpatrick, you can still project them for a decent amount of raw points, but I'm not sure how popular they're going to be. So I'm going to kind of monitor that as the week goes on. That's going to do it for me this week, guys. Going to kick things back over to Nick. Want to remind you guys that I do go live every Sunday at 1030 Eastern time. Going to go right up until about 1215 this week. So a little bit of a longer stream. So if you're watching this for the first time or you've been with us throughout the year, come hang out with us on Sunday morning. If you're into DraftKings and FanDuel, definitely check out my channel as well. I have a bunch of videos going up throughout the week. Just posted a stacks video. We'll have some of the top value plays in that video up soon. And then Again, my first looks have been super popular, kind of working through that data sheet. And if you did like the data sheet, make sure you jump into the Discord.